Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another episode of our Raw Reaction series. Joining you every morning to talk about Arsenal transfers. Apologies, I'm slightly out of breath. Forgot it was bin day. Uh, <laughs> as a run around with bin bags of hands. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing good and well. Uh, good morning, everybody joining us in the chat box. Let's say good morning to others uh, as well. Ali, good morning to you. To Matt G, uh, to Wilson, to Baldev. Good morning, guys. Hope you're doing good and well. Uh, Damien, we've got Paul, uh, we've got Mikey, Adam, Olu, Perez, Harvey, Carl. Good morning, guys. Uh, we've got Kay, we've got AFC West Mids, Jose, Noel, Lee. Good morning, everybody joining us in the chat box. Everyone that I can't, unfortunately, say good morning to either. Um, but I hope that you're having a fantastic week already. Let's kick on with today's stories. If you haven't already subscribed to the Arsenal way, make sure that you do. Um, we'll be doing a show over there at 10 a.m. as usual. Back on there after a couple of days off from work. It's been quite nice. Enjoying the sunshine, getting a fair bit of exercise in. All been good. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to today's chat. Um, let's kick on with our first story of the day, which is uh, the Arsenal announced yesterday that uh, they are basically in the process of renewing quite a few players. You've probably seen this over the course of the last year or so. We've seen a lot of young players um, renew their contracts with the club. And uh, this is set to continue. Uh, we've obviously got players like Kayan Edwards, if you remember, the young striker. I don't know if you've watched the Brook Norton Cuffey interview yet, um, but Brook Norton Cuffey is a player that uh, you all should be knowing about. He talks about Kayan Edwards a lot, but Mauro Bandera... Um, is the latest player to have his professional contract sorted out. So it's the player. I know next to nothing about him. I'm going to be very, very honest with you guys. I know absolutely nothing at all. Um, but a big congratulations to Bandera on, if that is the correct pronunciation, apologies if it isn't, on getting his first professional contract. Um, so yeah, big congratulations to him. Uh, speaking uh, about youngsters, though, Zach Swanson has left the club on a permanent deal. He will join Portsmouth uh, on a permanent move. We haven't got any information yet about the, the fee, how much uh, Portsmouth have paid. But we do know that Dan Cowley has been looking a lot at Arsenal's youngsters. They had Miguel Aziz on loan last season. Uh, and Portsmouth have been keeping a close eye on Arsenal's young guys and Zach Swanson, who has been on the bench a number of times in the Premier League this season, never made his senior appearance for the club. He has gone to Portsmouth uh, after going on loan to Holland or the Netherlands, to be fair, uh, a couple of years ago. So we wish him the best of luck. Marquinhos joined up with the squad yesterday. Really good news uh, about that. Obviously, seeing a player of his calibre and quality joining up with the group is going to be very, very good indeed. Uh, moving forwards to other attendees of training, Kieran Tini was back in action as well. Of course, we know that he suffered a serious knee injury whilst away with Scotland and has now had that uh, basically fixed through surgery. It's a surgery that's hopefully designed to prevent long-term reoccurrence of these problems but we never know with these things and Kieran Tierney so uh, we wish him the absolute best in trying to stay fit because we know that Arsenal are obviously in a market for a, a possible left back this summer because they know the problems they faced with him. Now Brooke Norton Cuffey was on the Beautiful Game podcast if you haven't listened to that I recommend it highly it was a really interesting conversation I've already mentioned it. he talks a lot about his time with Kayon Edwards as a kid, scoring ridiculous goals. You said he scored over 100 goals in a season at under 12s, stuff like that. That's the type of numbers that you've got to be putting in if you want to make it at the top level as a right back, you know, let alone a striker. But he talks about a lot of things, including improving his fitness, his physique, you know, bulking up and going to the gym and stuff when he's not even in training. And it's exciting to see where he might go next year with Arsenal, whether he'll stay in the first team. He was asked about his chances in the Europa League. He mentioned that Tommy Asu and Cedric are obviously there. So that's that's what we want to see. Fingers crossed uh, we can see him in an Arsenal senior shirt very soon. And Gabriel Jesus joined up with the Gabbies. Uh, Arsenal now have more Gabriels than Spurs have league titles, which is quite an interesting statistic. But uh, he's obviously got involved with training. He's expected to go on the German training camp so that is brilliant as well, seeing them lot all together. You've probably watched a lot about Gabriel Jesus now having signed. And sticking with Gabriel's, Gabriel Magalhaes continues to be linked with a move to Juventus. Uh, Italian media are claiming that he is the priority 
for the uh, Italian, I was going to say champions because I'm so used to saying that, but they're not, uh, not the Italian champions anymore. Um, but the Italian heavyweights still continue to be linked with a move for Gabriel Magalhaes. And they say they might be able to get to the £26 million. Pounds. Are you kidding? Not a chance. Uh, this is what I'm saying about kind of, you know, stories coming out from um, the Italian side of things. <sighs> Honestly. Uh, they, they will link us with anyone. Hickey, Savage, and now, of course, uh, Gabriel Magalash. I just can't quite get my head around it. We talked a lot about Savage on the Canton and Simu show, of course. Tyler Adams, who was linked to Arsenal quite heavily, will join Leeds. Uh, they struck a £20 million deal with RB Leipzig, well below that buyout clause of around £32 million. A player that I really like, uh, has got lots of versatility to his game, can play centre mid, defensive mid, right mid, left, uh, right back, sorry. You know, a very versatile player. It's like almost RB Leeds at the moment. They're bringing in a lot of RB players. Uh, Brendan Aronson, uh, Camera, who I've raved about a lot in the past. He's now gone there as well. And uh, and Tyler Adams also making a move to Leeds. Uh, and they're also closing in on Sinistera of Feyenoord. Leeds are going to have a very interesting squad next season, it seems, as they try and fight themselves away from another relegation battle. And our headline story of the day continues to be Lissandro Martinez. The Argentinian international and Ajax defender uh, has flown back, as we know now, to the Netherlands to tell Ajax twice, in fact, that he wants to move on. He wants to leave the club. It's said that both Arsenal and United have now offered a figure in the region of 45 million euros, um, which is going to be very intriguing indeed uh, to see which of uh, the clubs obviously end up getting hold of him. I hope it's Arsenal, obviously, but I am very, very, what's the word, uh, apprehensive <laughs> about this deal. We obviously talk a lot with, uh, I talked a lot about this with Harry yesterday. We're hopeful, but it is one he feels, Harry, is the going to you know, spread on throughout the summer. And it's going to get to, it's going to get to a situation where, unfortunately, um, we will either have to stump up the money or go home. And we've not done that so far this window. Besides with Jesus, you know, we've struggled to get the Rafinha bid to the level that they wanted. I'm not that fussed about that because it's a figure that I think was pretty crazy um, for a player in a position that was not a priority as much as the defender and the midfielder was. But it's going to cost Arsenal significantly if they want to get hold of him. Um, and that's what Arsenal have got to come to terms with. If you want the player, you're going to have to pay the money. It's as simple as that. Uh, and that completes all of today's stories. Uh, apologies for the slight uh, blurriness of the screen today. My internet is clearly not having the best of, of mornings, uh, which means we're probably going to switch to just the Q&A screens for today's one. Hopefully it improves, though, because I'd rather I didn't have to see, or rather you didn't have to see a blurry face. But we're going to move on to uh, the chat box now, um, in which I will address the obvious elephant in the room briefly. And then we will move on to your questions. So without further ado, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to jump into the chat box in just a brief second. But as I can see, and as, as obviously was the most predictable thing in the world that was going to dominate the chat box this morning, um, is of course the story that was first reported, I believe, by The Telegraph yesterday that a Premier League and international level footballer has been arrested in Barnet. Um, I'm not going to speculate on this story. I'm not going to answer any questions on this story. It is a story we know nothing about, nothing at all. I don't know who it is. You don't know who it is. It's not been revealed who it is. And it is incredibly dangerous to try and speculate about who a player is publicly. Incredibly dangerous when the allegations are of this level. So please don't ask me about this because I'm not going to give you an answer on it. I'm not going to give you any implications of who it might be, who it could be. What if it's this player? What if it's that player? It's silly to even discuss it publicly because of what the allegations are and because we don't know who the player is. So don't ask me about it. It's as simple as that. If you come here to try and get answers about that, sorry to disappoint you, it's not going to happen. So there you go. Um, anyway, we're going to move to your questions. I'm going to flick over to the Q&A uh, page uh, and get rid of my blurry face off the screen. There we go, because I know my internet's being a little bit crazy this morning. 
Um, let's answer some questions in the chat box. Uh, Van of Duty says, with City's group buying another club, do regulations need uh, to be changed as this gives them a huge advantage? Are oh, City Football Group buying another club? I've obviously been off work the last two days and I've been trying to stay away from as much football as possible. Uh, Palermo, of course, yes. I, I, we've reported on this previously. Do there need to be? Do there need to be any regulations put in place to stop this? Maybe Arsenal don't have any kind of relations in this same way at all, um, and we have obviously a relationship with Colorado Rapids because it's owned by Kroenke. Previously, we um, were in a situation with what was the club called? Um, was it Bergen in in Belgium? I think it was. Um, they aren't even a club anymore, but we used to send players out there on loan to, to Belgium quite a lot. Yeah, uh, it seems as though City are expanding their football group even more. They've got hold of plenty of players through this process. You think about uh, Pedro Porro, who was at Girona, that's now gone to Sporting on a permanent deal for a significant fee. They've just signed Savinho from Atletico Monero, and he looks like he's going to go to Troyes and then on loan, I think, to PSV. So Beveren, sorry, thank you. Beveren with a club in Belgium. Thank you, guys. Um, in regards to what this does for Arsenal, I did a show on how Brexit affects Arsenal a couple of years ago, talking about why Arsenal went out and signed the likes of George Lewis and Joel Idaho and Nikolai Moller. We signed a load of players from the continent in, in kind of a big swathe of, of you know transfers before that process closed the door to that. And the... This meant that Arsenal then could obviously couldn't go into the market for certain players. So they snapped up a load before that Brexit affected them. Arsenal need to, to do this. Arsenal absolutely need to watch what likes of City are doing and try and strike up relationships with other teams. Uh, a lot of people complained when we spent money on Marquinhos because we wanted to build a relationship with, um, with Sao Paulo. And yet, at the same time, we see criticism that we're not able to compete with the likes of City's football group because of their wide-ranging connections to clubs throughout the whole world. Arsenal need to create these relationships with clubs. They need to create these partnerships with teams. I'm not suggesting owning clubs like the City Football Group do because it's a, you know, the City Football Group is a massive billionaire-backed company, a corporation. Arsenal aren't going to do that uh, and the owners of Arsenal aren't certainly going to do that Arsenal's owners are in, you know they're interested in having separate franchises not a footballing empire if you like like City's football group is it's not going to happen but Arsenal certainly need to build up much better relationships with other teams uh, in order to make sure that they can try and find loopholes and ways around certain barriers to you know give them the competitive edge that City have when it comes to signing young players uh let's go to Wes says in my humble opinion um <laughs> humble but accurate I love that uh I still feel we need three or four players what's your thoughts Tom who are you keen to see to come uh, come to the club who would be the most important signings in my opinion we've still got three signings we need to make we need to make the versatile defender in the Martinez we need to bring in a progressive central midfielder in the two lemons or savage kind of mold and we need a wide forward that has the capabilities to also play as a central striker they're the three that I want. So Martinez, Tillemans or Savic, or a Cody Gakpo, a Musa Diaby, or a Pedro Gonçalves, any of those guys, that's what I would be looking for. Uh, Jacob says, where's the news about Milinkovic Savic? I know that there was a show yesterday, but we need to keep the hype going. Look, we discussed it yesterday, as you say there, Jacob. I didn't include it in today's stories because it's come from a very questionable place. Um, but as, we, as I said, we did chat about it yesterday. It's just not... At the moment, something I'm really going to put all that much stock into. Um, Rich says, Tom, three days until the first game in Germany. Do we have any team news of who's going yet? Do you think we'll see many youngsters getting a good chance to impress? I think there'll be lots of youngsters that will be going on that German training camp. Uh, obviously, we have players that aren't yet back from holiday like Saliba and Xhaka, etc., um, but there are a lot of players that are still there. So you Patino's of this world. Um, hopefully, Brook Norton Cuffey will be able to join up at some point, but he has just come back from the international tournament with the under-19s that he won, of course. Um, to, uh, for, oh, who's, who's the guy? Henry Francis. Players like this are going to be expected to move. Balogun, of course, will be joining up with them. Um, so there's going to be lots of players, I think, uh, that are absolutely involved 
with these types of moves. Uh, let's go to uh, Sunak, who says, what are the other alternatives to Tielemans? There isn't really. You know, the only midfielders we've been linked to beyond Tielemans are um, Milinkovic, Savic, and Onana, the Abadou Onana from, um, from Lille. They're the only ones that we've been linked to, to uh, so far. So there hasn't been too many, which is good, you know, because I don't want Arsenal to be linked to a plethora of players. I want Arsenal to be linked with a select group of players because it means we're being more targeted. It means we're being more specific with the players that we are pushing for. Uh, Ayas says, do you think Chelsea actually have a plan? Uh, since they're getting rid of their staff, they seem like they're poaching transfers for the sake of it. Yeah, uh, Harry brought up this yesterday on the Canton Simu show. Uh, that, that You know, Bowley's got rid of Gra Graviskaya. Is that her name? Um, uh, I can't remember the, the, her name. But, uh, yeah, they got rid of loads of people behind the scenes, basically made himself a de facto sporting director and are looking to poach big names, make statements. I'm not sure there's that much strategy behind it. That's great. You know, I, I'm loving that. You know, Chelsea were always a massive force in the market and looked pretty strategic with how they went through the process of buying and selling players. I think that um, when it comes down to Chelsea now, they are going to need to improve their recruitment department significantly. Otherwise, they're going to risk making some massive recruitment mistakes. I mean, the links to, to Ronaldo, for instance, absolutely strike me as just an owner that wants to make a statement. I hope that this continues because, you know, Chelsea might be in some real trouble very soon. Uh, let's go to uh, Oli who says, Hey, Tom, your choice of a top class predominantly wide forward in the mould of a Rafinha or a young wide forward like a Gakpo who can play as a striker? I go with the latter. We need someone with versatility. We need someone that can push forwards with uh, the ability to play in the middle uh, and also offer plenty of goals from a wide position. So I would go for the Gakpo style player. Uh, Masi Bulele says, uh, Tom, we already have 18 non-homegrown players. Do you think we might have to shift players before any signings are made? No, because I think the players will move on. Uh, if you think about who the non-homegrown players that are going to be in the squad next season. You know, Bernd Leno, Alex Runison, uh, Bear, not Bellerin, sorry, because uh, obviously he, does, he already counts as homegrown. Uh, Pablo Maurice, so that's three, possibly Tavares, maybe four. Uh, you've then got, uh, who else is going to leave? Lucas Torreira, that's five. And Nicolas Pepe, six. So, I mean, that's six players, maybe, that won't be here next season, that obviously are non-homegrown and may not be part of the squad. Uh, players that are non-homegrown that will be part of the squad, Matt Turner, obviously, Kieran Tierney, Gabriel, Cedric, uh, Tommy Asu, uh, Erdegaard, uh, Thomas Partey, Fabio Vieira, uh, who else have we got? Lakonga, Xhaka, so that's 10. Uh, we go to Jesus, 11. Um, and is that it? El Nenny, have I said El Nenny? 12? I think that's it. I think that's all of our non homegrown players. So we've still got, you know, slots in the squads to fill in that non homegrown quota. So I don't think you should be too worried about that at the moment. Uh, let's go to Ch -ch 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 Tono, who says, Tom, if you can pitch Arteta and Edu with three players for them to sign, who would they be? Uh, realistically, uh, I'll say realistically. Um, also, I think the screen may have sorted itself out. So we'll. We'll go on to the big screen. Um, realistically, three players. Obviously, Lissandro Martinez is is the clear and obvious candidate for that. You know why not that versatile defensive position? Midfield, Milinkovic, Savage, of course, is is my dream scenario for a midfielder. And a wide forward, I'd love to see Pedro and Chavez at Arsenal. I think he's a really interesting wide forward that can play in the middle. I would be very interested in seeing someone like him come to the club. If not him, then it is Cody Gakpo. It is someone like maybe Moussa Diaby um, that can be brought in. They, these are the types. I want goal scoring and creative wide players that can play in the middle. So absolutely, I think they're possible options. Uh, Lord Mayer says, how do you, uh, what do you think of Evan and Dika, a Frankfurt, a good player? Yeah, left-footed centre-back. I think that, you know, he would offer competition for Gabriel. But I'm not sure that he's versatile enough that we would move for him. So that's what we've got to wait and see. Sko says, how long until Patino is ready to play uh, a minor part? Could he be the third choice left centre mid role and then get some Europa and domestic cup games this year? Or is a loan more likely? 
it's never been suggested that the club see a loan for Patino as the next step. Like Saka, they never really have looked to a loan for Patino. They've always thought he's of a level that would see him progress into the Arsenal senior team fairly soon. Um, so I don't expect Patino to go on loan. It doesn't mean he definitely won't. Things change. But there's never been any suggestions from the club that Patino is seen as someone that will go on loan. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Freddie says, are you going to the Emirates Cup? I'm probably going to be working. Uh, the Emirates Cup, so probably not uh, unless I'm working it at the game, but uh, unlikely uh, that I'll be there because I'll probably be working it from home. Uh, Matt says, with the links to Onana, are they already looking at new backups uh, to Partey and Sambi? Uh, obviously, the defensive midfield position is something that as soon as you, as soon as soon Partey, you know, if, you, if we lose Partey because of injury, you drop down to, to Lokonga, to El Nini, to Xhaka, and it's a considerable step down. You know, Partey is a world-class midfielder, and if you drop down to those players, there is a gap. I think that Lukonga has the potential to be someone to fill that void. People say he's not ready yet, but the only way that you become ready is by playing games and by getting that development. I think he's got bundles of potential and there's a reason we signed him. But Onana for 30 million euros or pounds even is a lot of money for a player of 20 years of age that doesn't necessarily close the gap on Partey. So I, I don't think I'd go for that player at this moment in time. So let's wait and see. Uh, Terry says, I want to go to the Florida Cup. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people do as well. Um, let's go to uh, Sam, who says, do you think there is any good talents coming from the championship that we could bring in on the cheap? It's a good question. I don't watch all that much of the championship, to be fair. Um, so off the top of my head, no. The Blackburn Chilean striker, uh, is it? Um, Brereton, I think his name is. He's been highly rated for some time. Don't know what's happened to him this summer. He may have even already moved. I haven't kept up to date with it, but uh, he was always someone that was kind of linked to us as well. Uh, George says, Tom, would you be happy if Arsenal signs only Savage and a left centre-back? Happy? I want the wide forward. But if you said that Milinkovic, Savage and Martinez are the two players that we sign between now and the end of the window, you know, and our window is Turner, Marquinhos, Gabriel Jesus, Fabio Vieira, Milinkovic, Savage and Lissandro Martinez. I'm not going to be unhappy with that window. I will be a little disappointed that we didn't get the wide forward that could play in the middle. Um, but if it is to be Lissandro Martinez and Milinkovic Savic, I think that would be a huge window for Arsenal. A massive, massive step in the right direction and plenty of quality. You've got a world-class player in Savic, a potentially world-class player very soon in Jesus. All of those things combined for me you know, would lead to a very impressive window indeed. Thank you to the people in the chat box that are encouraging those to smash the like button. There's nearly 1,300 of you watching. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in and making this part of your daily routine. Uh, it really does help the channel out. If you can drop a like on the video, uh, it would be much appreciated. Uh, let's go to uh, Max, who says, uh, Morning, Tom, with City and Liverpool signing Haaland and Nunez. The big profile type of forwards, are we seeing a shift in style of football? Are we being left behind? Uh, love the show from South Africa. Uh, I've been asked this question before, and thanks for the kind comments, by the way. I've been asked this question before, and my answer is that I don't necessarily think so because it just happened to be that the best two strikers on the market of a young age were Nunez and Haaland, both of whom happened to be more physical, taller, uh, stockier, high-frame kind of strikers. I don't think it's a shift in st strategy. I just think the Liverpool and Man City wanted to bring in the two best young strikers in the planet right now, who are Nunez and Haaland. So I don't think it is necessarily a change of tactic. They wanted strikers and the best two happen to be of that style. So I think it's more coincidental uh, than it is strategy. So there you go. Um, Lynn says, what if the Barca deal doesn't go through for Rafinha? Do you think that we would go back in for him? I doubt it uh, because there's going to be a certain, uh, you know, I think there's going to be a certain figure that, that leads one and Arsenal aren't winning to meet that figure. And to be honest, I don't blame them. We've got other priorities. And if it means signing a wide forward that really doesn't play anywhere other than right wing for um, an amount of money that compromises our ability to, you know, sign someone elsewhere. Uh, 
I, I'm not sure that's worth it. The Blue Whale says, just wish we had a legit manager that was backed as much as Arteta. Yeah, I wish we had a manager that was backed right now. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem we're being backed as much this summer as I had hoped. Uh, I'd wish that we'd just gone in and stumped up the money for Martinez immediately, gone and got a midfielder that we wanted. Uh, I don't think we can suggest that Arteta's the issue right here. And I think the Blue Whale, there's a little bit of... Um, there's a little bit of spice in those comments. I think you probably need to move on from it when a new season starts, to be fair, and just judge things from where we see them. The season's done. We nearly got into the top four. It was a good season in the end, a disappointing one because we nearly got what would have been an overachievement. Who knows? Uh, Al Hood says, I think we would meet Rafinha's fee. It's just we know he wants Barca, so there's no point in meeting it until that falls through. I, even if it falls through, I just don't see us meeting the price. I might be wrong. Who knows? Let's wait and see. Uh, we've already spent 90 million. Yeah, we've spent 90 million quid. This is the most that we've ever spent in a window before, you know, August. It's it's crazy how much we've spent already in this window. And I'm looking forward to seeing how much more we spend and who we spend it on. Uh, I like the way that Arteta and Edu have completely changed the fabric of Arsenal's recruitment policy. And we are making some big, big moves in the market that have been needed to be made for a significantly long period of time. And were it not for those two being there, perhaps it would have just been same old, same old Arsenal. But uh, it's not been. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, Sylvester says, Tom, what is your obsession about a wide forwards uh, with KT? We need a tall striker. Um I think that the striker scenario, if Arsenal are going to be lumping balls into the box, that's not Arsenal. You know, I, I get the idea of having a different type of forwards, but Manchester City and Liverpool had their success not through having a big number nine in the box. Yes, they've got that this season, as I've already explained, because they've, you know, they've they've gone for the best two young strikers on the planet this summer who happen to be in that style. But you don't need a big lump of a striker to succeed. That's for sure. So uh, it's not an obsession. It's just a necessity, in my view, that we need to go for a wide forward that will give you something in the middle. Ironically, a player that you highlight in Gakpo is someone that is very tall uh, and plays both in a wide area and in the middle. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Abuz, Abuza says, uh, ideal Jesus partner, if you could pick anyone from a previous era to do the perfect job for us, who would it be? Stoikov, Hadji, uh, Klinsman, uh, Van Basten, Ronaldo, Baggio, uh, Henri or Shearer? It's a good question. Who would partner Jesus the best? I suppose Jesus could play in a slightly wider area. Um, I mean, you can't really look past R9, to be honest. He's probably the best striker um, that's ever lived, <laughs> probably, just on raw ability. It's closely followed by Thierry Henry, of course. But yeah, I, I don't think you can really look that far past R9 uh, as a striker. Very, very difficult to do that. Um, let's go to uh, Al Hood says, thoughts on Marquinhos being built like prime Roberto Carlos. There was a bit of, yeah, there's a bit of muscle about him, wasn't there? I think he might be ready for the Premier League. I'm looking forward to seeing what Marquinhos brings to Arsenal next season. It could be another Gabriel Martinelli surprise. It might not. We'll have to wait and see anyway we're going to wrap things up there thank you so much guys for tuning in um really appreciate your time as always do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here thank you for keeping the chat box respectful as always and uh i'll be back at 10 a.m over on the arsenal way this morning to discuss more all things arsenal and uh yeah i look like uh hopefully there should be a show as well maybe this afternoon i will keep you in the loop. Uh, look forward to that. And as always, up the Arsenal.